I think of myself as a fairly typical working mom. I'm up early to squeeze in some exercise before a busy work day, then end the day tossing something together for dinner, coaxing my kids to eat, to finish their homework, practice piano, and go to sleep. But a few aspects of my life are not exactly typical. First, I have five young kids, and the youngest three are two-year-old identical triplet girls. So, routine car rides home from school are anything but routine. Second, for my job, I'm an engineering professor at Ohio State University. And if you ask anyone from my daughter's second grade class, being a girl and a scientist or engineer is certainly not the norm. To beat the stress of juggling a non-typical family and a non-typical career, we bring in music. Lots and lots of music. And our current favorite is anything by the piano guys. Each day a different kiddo gets to choose the music in the car, and for weeks their only requests have been tunes off my piano guys playlist. Emily, it's your turn today. What do you want to listen to for the music? The wedding song. Okay, let's do the wedding song for Emily. Lucas, what would you like to listen to? The train song. All right, we'll listen to it after the wedding song. Here's the wedding song for Emily. I love being able to bring my outside interests into the classroom whenever I can. My current class is studying finite element analysis, a computational technique used by engineers in the design process that lets them explore how material and other design changes will affect the final part before anything is actually fabricated. We look at all different kinds of loads, but at this point in the semester we are getting ready to talk about modal analysis. It has always been a great lead-in to bring music to class because musical instruments are a fantastic visual as well as audio aid to help students hear and conceptualize what is happening as they change the length of a string, for example. So we typically have a fun day where I bring in my viola and demonstrate several concepts relating to natural frequencies. This year I stepped it up a notch due to inspiration from the Piano Guy's recent YouTube video, Titanium Pavan. It features their cellist, Stephen Sharp Nelson, playing not only a traditional wooden acoustic cello, but also an electric cello, a steel cello, and a carbon fiber cello. In this latest video I noticed that he was also playing a carbon fiber cello and it kind of got the wheels spinning in my head and I thought, well, wouldn't that be fun to analyze? Instead of analyzing the vibration of a gear or a car or some kind of structure that's a little more traditional in engineering, uh, why don't we look at something a little more fun? The students began with 3D CAD models of a cello, which they simplified to create a finite element model. They were then asked to vary the material, with steel, wood, and carbon fiber as suggestions from the video, to vary the thickness of their cello and to simulate different loading scenarios. As a result, they were able to see how changes affected the cello's structural as well as its acoustic response. They're going to be looking at the structural aspects of it. Um, what kind of stresses would you expect in a cello due, due to just typical loading, due to tension in the spring transmitted through the bridge to the, to the top of the cello, or um, they're going to be looking at what happens if there's some kind of trauma to the cello. Our intuition tells us that if you beat on something that's made out of steel, you get a very different sound compared to wood. And students should be able to, to see as they do their project is exactly what influences that. Is it the density of the material? Is it the stiffness of the material? Is it the thickness? Of the material. To provide some inspiration on different kinds of loads that a cello could experience in a not-so-typical application, I showed them Me and My Cello, another Piano Guys video in which Steve and his cello explore everything from yoga and grocery shopping to volleyball and skydiving. The students jumped right in with developing their models and some stretched the boundaries with their creativity. We can predict pretty poor performance from a cello made out of PVC, for example. Regardless of the material, a cello will not stand up well to a punch from a heavyweight boxing champion. And if you expect your 30-pound toddler to sit on it, you had better plan on ordering a custom steel or aluminum cello, because your standard wood cello will not fare well. Some students estimated deflections due to air pressure during skydiving, while others simulated what would happen if the player became frustrated, picked up the cello by its neck, and smashed it against the nearest hard surface. And yes, one student did choose to model a cello made out of titanium after the song. While technically not bulletproof, maybe next year we'll design a Kevlar cello, if someone were to make a cello out of titanium, it would hold up well to most of the rest of the loading scenarios, and it would be a fitting addition to a YouTube cover of the song, Titanium.